Greetings, African people. I have some biases and I'm aware of them. What I do with those biases remains to be seen. But, you know, I want to have an honest conversation today with you. How do you feel about having one-on-one -on -one discussion with individuals regarding some problems that you have in your community? For me, I struggle in having this conversation. You see, on the surface, I can talk to anybody about whatever issue. But when it comes to some sensitive issue in my community, you know, when I have these discussions with individuals that are not in my race, I usually go in with John these eyes because I always wonder, why is this issue of concern to you? See, I'd like to think that as human beings, you know, we should be loving and concerned about each other and what goes on in our communities. But oftentimes when people from different race come to have these discussions, usually it is very prejudiced. Usually it's sometimes coming from a place, you know, of discrimination when they have these discussions. So let me give you an example. Yesterday I was having a discussion um, with a white lady and a white man and another black man. And the topic was about black women having children that they can't afford. And though I know that that is a topic that, you know, we ought to discuss, I think there's a way of doing it that I don't appreciate. For example, when even African men come out and the way they come out and the kind of attack strategy that they use i find it very difficult to have those conversations so setting aside how i feel about girls or women having children that they can't afford the focus of this video is to tell individuals that i'm very uncomfortable having these conversations with you so if you're a white man or a white woman and you want to talk to me about black women wearing weave even though i have had those discussions I find it extremely uncomfortable to have that discussion with you because when you start talking about the black woman wearing weave, I don't know what your intention is because for the most part, you know, you might be benefiting. The hair industry is not black people who own these hair or sell these hair, mostly Chinese or, you know, other people who benefit from the sale of hair. So I'm not sure why you would be critiquing it. Is it? just to be prejudiced, you know, or discriminatory. I don't know. And I discriminate, I guess, by making point about the hair thing because I feel, you know, it's embarrassing because of what people are saying. Sometimes we really shouldn't concern ourselves too much about what others are saying, but sometimes it becomes overwhelming when you hear it so much, you know, you start feeling a certain kind of way about it. Um, as far as the discussion with this uh white woman yesterday um about the girl the girl was dancing and uh there was another one that was in a fight they were discussing these two events and um the woman said that you know these black girls always come out naked and that they um just you know had pure baby mama drama and i felt very uncomfortable having this discussion with this lady because for one based on what i know about her and um peggy you know i told you i was going to do a, a response to it and so here i am i won't mince any words i'm going to be very honest it was difficult for me to listen to you talking about black women having all these children because coming from a white woman it's as if you're saying that the black woman doesn't have the right to procreate that's what I, I heard. And as a white person, when I hear you saying a black woman shouldn't have kids, I am thinking that you're doing it, you're saying that because you're a racist. You might not be a racist, but it just coming out of your mouth is saying that the women having too much children would seem as if you have a problem with our race growing. That might not be your intention, but that's how I take it. It's difficult to hear any person from any race talk about our women having too many children because that's how 
you build your race. That's how you grow. Now, I know we should have responsibility as far as bringing our children in the world and not making them suffer, but uh, it's difficult to have that conversation with you, Peggy. And it's even worse when I know that I don't think you are concerned about these black kids that are coming in the world and don't have enough, you know, financial support or emotional support. I think you're jealous because you struggle with fertility issues. You're not concerned about the children that come in the world that are black and too much of a them are around. You are upset because you're comparing yourself, thinking that you're in a position where you can take care of kids. And um, these women are having kids that they can't afford. And so you think, you know, you are more entitled and therefore should be able to have kids as opposed to other people. And now you're not the only person, Miss Peggy, that feels this way because there are other black women who also speak on the same topic. But if you take a careful look, individuals who usually come out saying people are having too many kids are people who are struggling with fertility issues. And um, oftentimes people who are, you know, wealthy just have one child and those who don't have, you know, good education or good financial situation tend to have a lot of kids. Well, maybe that is related to education because there's a direct correlation between educated people and the number of children that they have. Uh, for, the, for the most part, educated people, you know, spend a lot of time in school, uh, tend a, a lot, spend a lot of time in pursuit of, of um, career and so on and so forth. Whereas individuals who are not well-educated, you know, sometimes don't have jobs. And so they have more time on their hand. You know, that could be a reason why individuals um, have kids that they can't afford. And I'm not trying to justify it. It is a topic, but it's hard for me to have that discussion with you because hearing you, it's like the moment you start saying the black woman has too many children, all I hear is wah, 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 wah. after that, I cannot listen to you. I cannot have that discussion with you, even if you mean well. Even if you mean well, because there are many individuals who comes out to have these discussions with us and they appear to be coming from a place of concern, but they are not. And I don't know you. I don't want to read your mind. And, you know, I know you, you know, superficially, but I, I'm not, I don't know you like that. So I don't know what you're thinking. What I do know is that you have issues conceiving. And so your opinion might be based on the fact that you're struggling to conceive and here are all these kids. Maybe you could put that into perspective for yourself to ask yourself, am I actually concerned about the children coming into the world and suffering or am I just angry and jealous and maybe a little bitter? Because sometimes it, ha it happens to the best of us. So you see somebody with something that you want and because you're struggling to get that thing, you actually, you know, feel resentment towards those individuals. Black kids' lives matter. And yes, we need to be more accountable, but you would have to have that conversation with some of your friends as I have those conversations. But that's not a cross dialogue that I'm willing to have. I can't have it with you. In the same way that I can't discuss um, how I feel about black men with you. Because if you come to me, and you often do, talking about your relationship with white men or white women, and I am not at liberty to have the discussion in giving my personal opinion about that situation. You refer to poor white people as trailer park trash. I can't join you in that. I don't appreciate that kind of prejudice. But that's your thing. If you want to call another white person trailer park trash, that's your thing. But I would be stupid to join you in saying that because if I said that about one of my people and you joined in and said that, I would switch that flip. I would flip that script so fast. I don't have discussions with white people or Chinese people or Indian people that is negative about my own people. Now, sometimes I do videos because I've, it's something like, for example, molestation of ch girls and things like that. I, I, it's out in the world. And so that's a critique on my men. 
but I do that because I, you, I get to the point where I said something has to be done about that and I don't care if I make you look bad. In that case, I take the chance and I put it out there. But to have private one-on-one -on -one conversations with any white person or Chinese person or Indian person about some sensitive matters within my community, I cannot have that discussion with you. It is uncomfortable, uncomfortable for me because I don't know where you're coming from. So, you know, while I would like to have discussions with you on open topics, that conversation where you sound as if you're attacking someone in my race, I have a problem with it. I have a big problem. And this is the best place to have this conversation because I told you yesterday what exactly what I say here and I also said I was going to do a video on it. Um, in terms of others who are part of my subscription, I am very sensitive about certain things as it relates to my conversation. It depends on the approach you take. But if you come out with your attacks and some of you come out pretending to be African people, making these blanket statements and some very racist or prejudice statements. And um, I will sometimes go off on you because I don't feel comfortable having that conversation. Be blessed, everybody. Think on these things.